People love fishing hacks. You wanna know why? I do too. Today, I got a bunch more of them. Three of them I actually got from my subscribers because... And they are pretty dang awesome. You know, I know you know. So why waste time? Let's jump right into this. Like a lure get thrown in the lake. No, you didn't. Fishing hack, number one. They've got these little wire baskets at the Dollar Tree. And I know, I know, it's a dollar twenty-five tree now. But when I did that last video about the one dollar fishing hacks, everybody kept pointing that out. But when I filmed that video, everything was still a dollar. Anyway, they got these little wire baskets at Dollar Tree. They've got big ones and they got little ones. They even got white ones, if you want a white one. But it doesn't really matter which one you use. But whichever one you pick, you're gonna need three of them. So that's $3.75. For video purposes, and hopefully it'll be easier to see, I'm gonna use the white baskets. What you wanna do is take your first white basket, and you see this ring on the outside on the top, and there's one on the bottom. Take you a pair of tin snips and cut along this line right here. Leave all the wire that you can just cut this ring out. You follow this line and cut it out on both sides. And when you finish, you'll just have the wire and not the ring left. But only do this to one basket. Next, we're gonna roll this up like a cone and you want it tapered just like it was on the side. You want one small end and one big end. How big you leave it is up to you. But after you get it rolled up, you'll have a cone like this. You're gonna wanna clip your ends sort of like this. Then you can wrap those ends over inside those squares. After you get it wrapped, it'll look kind of like this. And it will hold itself together that way. And it's pretty solid. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to draw off our hole, cut it out. I'm gonna use my 10 snips again for this part. After you work your way completely around the top, use some needle nose pliers and bend your wires inside the holes. Then we want to flip it over, reach inside the holes with the pliers and bend down those wires. And then finally, I took the handle end of a screwdriver and I flattened all the wires back out. When I'm done with it, it's pretty dang sturdy. It ain't moving at all. The last step I'm going to do is totally unnecessary, but I'm going to do it. But you don't have to. I got some white Flex Seal, and I'm going to respray this thing. The Flex Seal is a rubber coating, and when it dries over all those cut wires, it should seal them back together good and strong. Or at least I'm hoping it will. Now that our flex seal's dried, look at how seamless it is. I mean, the rubber kind of fills in all the little bends you do. And it turned out pretty dang good, honestly. Pretty dang strong too. Now we're gonna take our other side and we're gonna put a couple tie straps on them. And when you're finished, you got you a minnow trap. Just like them high dollar minnow traps that you buy online. This video idea came from one of my subscribers and he actually posted it on the Facebook page. This thing actually turned out better than I thought it would. And the cool part is, it ain't 15 or 20 bucks. This thing right here costs me $3. You can't beat that. What kind of money do fishermen make? I don't know. Net profits. Fishing hack number two. This hack was sent to me by one of my subscribers. All right, Keith, so this is what I came up with. My wife was out at Dollar Tree, and I seen these things here, and they're garden tool hangers. They're gonna hold your rake, your little shovels, your spades. So what I decided to do was figure if they can hold a shovel, they should be able to hold a rod. So I just mounted them on my ceiling. They can hold two-piece rods, and they can hold, you know, 
one piece. The only thing I have to watch out for is with this opening right here being the way that it is, if you get a smaller tip or something, those could potentially fall down. So you definitely want to put them closer together. And they hold in there, they're nice and firm. Pretty sturdy, man, especially for a buck. What Corey used was garden tool holders, but I found out that you can use mop and broom holders and they're kind of the same thing. I mean, there's a little bit of difference but not too much. It really all comes down to whether you want white ones or whether you want black ones. In a nutshell, pretty much. So I picked me up a couple because I wanted to try them and see how I liked them. Actually, these things are pretty dang cool. And just by the way these things are made, the thickness of what goes in here is what's gonna be important. It would probably grab the rod good up here, but I think that I would mount mine by the handles and I'll show you what I mean. And how you make these things work, you reach underneath it and you pop it out. You want it laying flat like this. Okay, so I got this one open and I got this one open. Now I'm gonna push one part of the rod in and then I'm gonna push the other part of the rod in. As it goes in, it locks it into place. It actually holds these rods pretty tight and it's got perfect spacing in between the rods. And according to what I paid for these things, you could do about four rods for $5. I was at the pawn shop shopping and I ran into one of my subscribers. What's your name? Dwayne Horde. Dwayne Horde. So I did what anybody would do. I put him to work. Act number three. <laughs> and Oliver, my best friend. So there's this company called Boat EFX. Pretty sure that's right, Boat EFX. Anyway, they got these cool little bungee cords and they go on your depth finder and they hold the cover on when you're going down the road so it don't blow off. Well, that ain't a bad idea. And you've probably seen these things before. They're called adjustable toggle balls. I think I got this pack at Walmart a long time ago, but you can get them off of Amazon and all kinds of places. Well, I did a little experimenting and these 12 inch toggle balls are perfect for a nine inch depth finder. But if you happen to have a 14 inch toggle ball around or just some extra bungee cable, you could retie it and make it longer and it'll fit a 12 inch. And all you have to do is you take your toggle ball, you see that slot right there? You pull that bungee cord out and you basically make it to where your toggle ball is a figure eight. Now you can put one side on each side of your depth finder and it'll hold it on for you. Or you could take one of these toggle balls apart by untying the knots on the ends. You can throw the ball away and they sell these little cord locks at Walmart and they don't cost very much at all by the way. But what they are is kind of like the cord locks that you got on your hoodies. You take your bungee, stick it through that cord lock, and when you're done, you got you a bungee with the cord lock on it. Now you can wrap it around your depth finder and lock it down. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you don't have any of those toggle balls, you can get bungee cord at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. How many fish does it take to change a light bulb? Oh my god. One, but you should have the size of that light bulb. It was this big. Mm. Hack number four. On this next fishing hack project, we're gonna need a pool noodle, we're gonna need some braided rope or paracord to work, and we're gonna need some flex seal. I'm doing mine white. You could easily do this black, but I like white because it's easier to see. The first thing we're gonna do is take our pool noodle and I'm gonna cut about two inches off of this. Now you could use a bandsaw and make it real clean. I like to do that. <laughs> Or you can just use a razor knife. Okay, so I got my pool noodle cut at about two inches. Well, I also cut another piece of pool noodle just a little bit longer, and we're gonna cut a little wedge out of this. The reason for cutting the wedge in this one is because we're gonna use it to plug this hole. It can be square, it can be round, it doesn't matter, but make it about the size of the hole in the pool noodle. So now we got our wedge cut, but before we stick our wedge into our hole, we're gonna run our rope or paracord through it first and tie a knot on the end. After you get your wedge in, trim down what's left over. If it's not tight enough, you can stick a little bit more pool noodle in it, make it tighter. And make it where your knot's just barely sticking out. That right there is what we're looking for, a solid result. Now, after we're through with the pool noodle, then we're gonna take our flex seal and we're gonna coat this pool noodle. We're gonna coat it and rubberize it really good because it's gonna hold everything together once that rubber dries. And after applying several coats, you get yourself a rubberized pool noodle, which is really kind of cool if you think about it. They sell these pool noodle boys 
for a pretty good amount. Seems like 15, 20 bucks. This rubber coating is going to protect it and make it last a whole lot longer. One thing you could do to make yours look better is to dip it in rubber. But all I had was spray, so that's what I used. And it worked out pretty good. What you can do with this thing, you take your string, you can tie it to your fillet knife, you could tie it to your boga grips. I mean, you could tie this float to pretty much any fishing tool that you have so that you don't lose it. And the cool thing about a pool noodle this size is it'll hold up a lot of weight. Fishing hack number five. Now, one thing a fisherman needs is a good knife. A fisherman has to have a good knife on him. You know, for all kinds of reasons. Whether it's a fillet knife or a good bait knife, a fisherman's gotta have a knife. You know what I'm saying? Well, what if you dropped your knife in the water? What if your knife gets dull? What if you left your knife at home? Well, this next hack is for you. This right here is a credit card knife. I actually got this thing for Christmas a few years ago from my brother-in-law, and it's really kind of cool. It's got this little button right here, and you flip this button. Well, after you do that, the blade will pop up. Then you can fold this thing out, and the rest of it becomes a handle. And yes, it's not a very practical knife to be carrying around every day in your pocket. And it's got a steel blade, and it's pretty dang sharp. But wouldn't be something bad to keep in your wallet or something to keep on your boat just in case of an emergency. I'm just saying. Plus, when it's broke down, it really is thin and it really will fit in your wallet. Those fishing hacks turned out awesome. They really did. Some of them turned out really cool. And if you're one of those people that really like fishing hacks, well, I got a bunch of them, okay? I mean, I got a bunch of them, bunch of them. So why don't you go over to my channel page and check it out because I got a bunch of DIYs too and you'll probably find something you like. And if you do find something you like, if you subscribe, they'll notify you when I post new stuff and you can go watch my old stuff. And it's totally free. Think about that. It's free. Click subscribe, people. What you waiting on? What you waiting on? And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next build.